things work better when you turn the microphone on. I'm Eric Darling with Darling Data. Nothing if not professional recorders. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about more, more T-SQL learning, uh, where we're going to talk about indexed view ups and downs. Uh, this is, of course, bite-sized portions, little morsel-sized portions of my full T-SQL course, which if you go down into the video description, there is a link to buy at the pre-sale price while the advanced material is, uh, is polished up and tech-reviewed. So uh, you, you, well, you can buy it for half price now or full price later. Um, I can tell you w which one I'd prefer, but if we, if we pit what I prefer versus what you prefer, you, you, you would probably end up just buying it now. Um, you can also do all sorts of other stuff with the links. You can hire me for consulting, become a, uh, a contributing uh, with money member of this channel, not with content. Uh, you can ask me office hours questions for free, right? Ask me privately, I answer publicly, we all have a nice time. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff with me, you can do the usual like, subscribe, tell a friend, yada, yada, yada. Uh, of course, I will be leaving the house a little bit, um, more, way more often than I usually do. Uh, I'm going to Dallas, September 15th and 16th. I'm going to Utrecht, Netherlands, October 1st and 2nd. And of course, I'm going to Seattle, November 17th to 21st. These all have something in common. And they, they are all uh, pass related events. Uh, the, the two in Dallas and Netherlands, or of course, Utrecht rather, are uh, pass on tour events. Those are little mini events. And of course, Pass Data Community Summit is the big one. Uh, at, that, at the big one in Seattle, I have two days of T SQL pre cons with uh, Kendra Little, where we will light up the stage in your lives and your minds with T SQL goodies. <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought on that one. Anyway. Let's talk about index views here a little bit and let's figure out the right SSMS spawn to open and let's get into things. So teaching beginners about indexed views is a little bit difficult, mostly because uh, once you've taught, once you've talked through all the limitations and once you've talked through all the sort of, uh, uh, you know, weird stuff between standard edition and enterprise edition, uh, you, you're left with people who are just com completely blank eyed and slack jawed. And they're just like, what, what is the point of any, this doesn't make my life easy. <laughs> uh, how long has this feature been on this, this V1 <laughs> happened, right? <laughs> ah, you got fabric. Uh, oh God. Yeah. Regret. Anyway, so there, there's some stuff that you can't do in indexed views uh, that, that has workarounds, right? Like you can't use the average function directly, but you can do a sum divided by a count big. All right. Uh, you can't do a sum on a nullable column, but you can use is null on the nullable column to replace nulls with zeros. So you can get around that. Uh, and you, you can't do distinct, uh, but you can group by, uh, you know, any, any, any columns that you need to. Uh, and and do and have have that get matched. So that that's all cool, right? Great. Here's the stuff you can't do. And to me, this is like a few of these are like table stakes, right? Like min and max. Like how dare you? <laughs> it's like 99% of why I'd want a filtered or why I'd want an index view is min and max, right? Aggregates. <sighs> How do we live? Uh, we can't use window functions, so that includes anything with an over clause. We can't use table expressions. That means common, derived, uh, anything like that. We can't use subqueries. This includes exists and not exists. Um, why you cannot use exists and not exists, I don't know. That's a bit strange to me. You can do all the, I mean, you can do all the inner joins you want, but exists and not exists don't work. Order by, I guess that makes sense. Uh, that would be a little weird. Uh, top and offset fetch. I also probably get that. Uh, no outer joins. That means left, right, or full. You cannot use cross apply or outer apply. That is befuddling in ways, but okay. Uh, no inline or multi-statement functions. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Uh, inline actually probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Uh, no pivot, unpivot, having union, union all, or accept or intersect. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess, I guess some of that. I mean, I'm not going to say it makes sense, but I will say uh, I could I could live without this stuff, right? The other stuff, some of this other stuff is like we got fabric, okay. So this list usually kills off most of the bright ideas people have. 
Uh, especially once you take out min, max, and uh, any form of outer join, the, the use and utility of of index views in SQL Server gets thrown directly out the window. Um, then once you throw in the fact that uh, all of your client options need to exactly match this magical incantation of things in order to match automatically with index views, um, the blank-eyed and slack-jawed developers at this point just usually fall out of their chairs because once you start saying hey well you know i mean you could always just like you know uh, adjust your connection strings in entity framework there or whatever orm they 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 die you you kill them you their soul leaves their body it is instant death it is death touch right um so you know whatever let's just move on <laughs> T talking about this makes me angry. <laughs> so let's create an index view that, that works, right? We're going to create or alter this view. We got fabric. Uh, great. So now we have an index view. So stuff that you need to have in an index view, if you are going to, uh, well, if you're going to have an index view, it must be created with schema binding. That's a pretty easy rule to follow. And if you are going to have any sort of gr grouping elements in your index view, then you must have a count big in there. Uh, there are good reasons for this that um, the, the, the wording for always escapes me when I have to talk about it, but I have, I'll have dreams about it sometimes. Now, because we have an index view properly, or rather we have a view set up with all of the required bibs and bobs necessary, we have done the incantations. In order to uh, index it, we can now we are now free to do that. We can create a unique clustered index, and we can create a, a non-clustered index on our indexed view. And this this all happens pretty quickly. Now, a lot of people, when you're talking about index views, uh, will get you know worked up about index view maintenance. Um, ideal world, uh, under you know most circumstances, you will be lucky enough that your uh, index view maintenance will not be any more expensive than the maintenance of maybe an additional non-clustered index on the table. This does change a little bit if you get any bright ideas about joining tables together in your indexed views, because then you start to get into stranger locking scenarios. But anyway, move on a little bit. Uh, in some cases, a SQL Server can match uh, some expression that you write uh, to an indexed view. All right, let's make sure actual execution plans are enabled here. And if we run this, we will see that we do indeed do a seek into our indexed view, right? Look at us go. We have indexed view matched. We did a good job there. We are using our post scores uh, index view. That's this thing. And we have hit the non-clustered index on total score in that index view. So good job us, 100%. If we were to run this query and have it not work, um, one, one way that I can show you what it would look like, because like with the, you know, getting index views to not match is like, I would have to like do something obviously stupid, but like sometimes you might find yourself writing a query that you would expect to match the indexed view and the query plan will end up looking like you just touched the base table anyway, which would be the case here. Now, this happened because I use the option expand views thing. Um, little little weird that that's a thing but okay you know we, we expanded our index view and got a worse query plan right we had to do that whole calculation where we have that calculation basically stored in the index view so like why would we want to expand that here i don't know but we have the op i can show you that sometimes sql server will not uh not adhere to our index view requests um we can and but one thing that is important and this is something that you will almost definitely need in standard edition <clears throat> is the no expand hint. So just tell SQL Server you are not under any circumstances allowed to expand the indexed view and we will indeed get uh, usage of the indexed view here. So we, we, you know, for a query that maybe um, SQL Server will be like, no, 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 We're, this would be too expensive. We, we can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand this view and do the other thing. You can, you can override SQL Server, uh, you can override SQL Server's uh, thought process on that and say, no, thank you, no expand. <laughs> Please no. Uh, so the no expand hint will work there. Now, but one thing that is important, whether you are on standard edition or enterprise edition, is that uh, unless you use the no expand hint, uh, SQL Server will not create or use statistics on your index views 
Um, if you might get bad estimates and you might even see missing statistics warnings uh, if you don't use it. So, um, you know, at least uh, maybe like, you know, when, like when you start querying your index views, you might want to throw something on there with a no expand hint. You at least get statistics created on that. And then, you know, don't forget to update your statistics because that's, that's usually a good thing, right? Usually. Stuff we can get away from, stuff we can get away with sometimes, but anyway, we got fabric. Cool. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in tomorrow's video where we have some equally uh, interesting T-SQL stuff to talk about. All right. Cool. Thank you and goodbye.